Hey guys, Kid Guru here for the Tech World, Adrian, and today I'm going to show you guys how to trick your browser, either Firefox, Safari, and or Chrome, into thinking that it's running on the iPad user engine. So that means basically it will load web pages in the iPad interface. Now this is really cool if you, obviously if you have known Apple today launched the iPad Wi-Fi models, uh, it's Apple's new tablet-like device, but basically uh, a lot of websites like Gmail have uh, made a new layout so that this whole, you know, touch screen interface and stuff like that integrates well with the iPad. And the Gmail interface a lot of people like because it's kind of like a two-pane column simplified interface and a lot of people liked it. Now obviously porting it to the desktop won't be as perfect just because, especially in Firefox, it doesn't do it. Uh, it is a little buggy just because it's not, obviously it's not running on a touch screen like it would be on the iPad. Though it does port it over pretty nicely. And you'll see that when I actually show you how to do it in Safari. First off, I'm going to show you how to do it in uh, Chrome. But Chrome, well actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you to a tutorial. Just because in Chrome, you actually have to do a little bit of way, uh, you have to do a little bit of a hex, hex, hexadecimal editing. And you have to use some programs. So that can be a whole tutorial on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link you off. To this great, great article I saw on how to use the uh, the certain third-party software to change the hexadecimal code in the uh, Chrome browser, and you can get an interface like this. So if you're really dedicated, if you're you know an all-time Chrome user and you want this interface, I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and check this uh, tutorial out. It'll be in the video description. All right. So as for Firefox, if this works on both Firefox for Mac and Windows, I believe you want to go ahead and download the add-on called User Agent Switcher. I'll leave a link to this as well in the video description. So go ahead and add it to Firefox. Uh, once you do that, it's going to prompt you to restart Firefox. Go ahead and go to Tools after you've done that. And it'll say Default User Agent. You won't have this right here that says iPad Config. I just made that uh, just as a test to make sure it works. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it show you how to do it. So you'll get to this menu. You're going to head New, New User Agent. You're going to name it. I'm just going to name mine iPad for the description. As for the User Agent, you're going to want to paste in... Uh, the code that I'm going to pop up right here on the screen and I'm also going to put this in the video description. It's going to be easier if you get it in the video, video description and just copy and paste it just because it is a long string of text. Alright, so, sorry, I actually had to, had to get the code here. So paste this into this uh, little box right here and I'm going to again leave this in the video description. Hit OK, hit OK again, wait for it to finish up there. And as soon and then now you're just going to want to go to, again, Tools, Default User Agent, and just enable iPad Config by clicking it. And if you want to go back to the default, same thing, but vice versa, just click Default User Agent. Go back to Gmail, hit Refresh, and it should, just give it a second, load the iPad interface. So I'm just going to say right now, not now. And as you see here, it's not perfect. It does okay. It's not the best. You can navigate through, and since you don't have a touch interface, you can use these little buttons right here to navigate through your emails. Again, it's not perfect in Firefox. It is a little buggy uh, just because it's not built for Firefox. But when I show you in Safari, you'll be able to see the full-featured iPad interface. So it is a little buggy in Firefox, so it does work. Um, though what people don't realize is you can actually try other stuff like Reader out. And Reader actually works okay in Firefox, as you see here. The iPad interface loads well, and it is a little, something uh, more minimalistic. Some people might prefer the iPad interface, so it is something to check out. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and go to Safari to show you guys uh, how to do it in there, and you guys will get an idea of how good the iPad interface looks on the desktop client. All right, so... Here we are in Safari, and for Windows, this is Safari 4. You can download it as well for Mac. What you want to go is first go to your settings here, and you're going to load your preferences. So go ahead and go down to preferences. Wait for the box up. You're going to want to click advanced. From here, you're going to want to make sure you hit this show develop menu in menu bar. And for this, for in Mac, it's going to be in your top dock bar, and for Windows, I'm about to show you where it is. It's going to be in this little page button right here. So from there, you want to go, go to develop. From develop, you're going to want to go to user agent. From user agent, you just want to go down all the way to other and hit that. This box should appear. And again, the same thing. You're going to paste that same code I gave you earlier and hit OK. Now what you're going to want to do is go ahead to the start. And we're just going to go ahead and type in gmail.com hit enter and 
And what we should get is the Gmail interface starting to load here, so just give it a second. And as you see, it loaded perfectly, and you can see this is the real, uh, you know, it really does a good job in rendering the whole iPad interface where your mail is all off here. You can use these arrows to navigate up and down throughout your inbox. You can click this menu button to get an overview. You get your inbox, your start items, your chats, your sent mail, all that stuff. You can do other stuff like archive, delete. Uh, you can go down here and again go through reader. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to calendar just to show you the iPad interface look. And as you see here, mine's in a different language, so it does give you those little square boxes just because I didn't have the language loaded. But that works as well. And you can go back and load other stuff like reader, photos, YouTube, etc. Anyways, uh, this doesn't only work for just the whole Google suite but other websites that support the iPad uh, interface as well. So go ahead and go around, you know, you can try different sites out, uh, YouTube, maybe, uh, you know, whatever news sites you know of that have an iPad interface, and go ahead and try them out using this user agent type of, I guess you could call it a hack. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, if you know any sites that you find out that can load in a different, you know, interface, really cool interface that works functionally, either on Safari or Firefox or Chrome, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below, or you can shoot me an email, adriantech at, adri at gmail.com. You can send feedback, etc. Request for another tutorial, either in the comments or email me. And again, please don't forget to rate, comment, and su subscribe to the video. It really helps a lot. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to check out our website at adriantech.com, tutgeek.com, and weurl.com. Uh, and again, if you want to follow me on some Twitter for some exclusive content, go ahead and follow me at twitter.com slash kidguru. Thanks, guys, for watching. I will catch you next video.